I'm showing a picture of the head of the PLO, I mean, the Palestinian Authority actually is called Abbas, and the uh, then Prime Minister of Israel being held together in what looks like the Oval Office by George Bush. The gentleman who was Bush's uh, foreign policy advisor dealing with the Middle East, uh, Under Secretary for the State Department is Elliot Abrams. He's one of the most knowledgeable people in America concerning this situation. And uh, he's here with us right now. We're going to talk about his book called Tested by Zion. So, Elliot Abrams, we're delighted to have you with us here on the 700 Club. Thank you. It's really a great pleasure to be with you again, Pat. Listen, uh, in your book, you're talking about the obsession with the Middle East peace process, and you're saying that the actors and the big players throughout the Middle East really don't put that number one on their agenda. Is, is that a true statement of what you said? It is a true statement. If you talk to the Israelis or to most of the Arabs, what they're worried about is Iran. Peace process is, you know, off on the side, and they sometimes wonder why we obsess about it when their real concern is Iran. Well, you've said also when our diplomats are working on this and the uh, politicians, they seem more concerned about the process and so they're more concerned about uh, getting some kind of something on a piece of paper than actual progress on the ground. Talk about that. Absolutely right. You know, everybody's looking for the great handshake on the White House lawn, Nobel Peace Prize, big international conferences, um, when really what we ought to be concerned about is security and prosperity for people living in Israel and uh, living in the Palestinian areas. How can we make their lives better? How can we help them get uh, better jobs, more autonomy, more mobility? But instead of focusing on these pragmatic things, you know, everybody wants that great conference in the sky. Uh, and we miss a lot of opportunities to improve people's lives. Um, this picture on the cover of your book shows Ariel Sharon, who was the Prime Minister of Israel. I've, I've met with him, prayed with him. He's a real nice guy. Uh, but he did something I thought was a big mistake when he gave away Gaza. Am, am I right in that, or do you take a different view of it? Very controversial and uh, divides Israelis. He did that as a general, I think, thinking that 1,500 Israelis in the middle of a million and a half Palestinians uh, was just a huge strain on the Israeli army forever. Many generals think his real mistake was not in getting out of those settlements in Gaza, but in getting out of the what's called the Philadelphia Strip that divides Gaza from Sinai, because that's the route that all those weapons come from Iran to Hamas. And a lot of generals think if he had kept that strip, uh, he would have been protecting Israel's security a good deal better. But it is a big controversy in Israel. It's amazing. Hamas has moved into that area, filled the vacuum, so to speak, and uh, uh, they're launching uh, missiles on an almost daily basis into those uh, Israeli territories. They are. And, you know, Israelis call that Gaza Hamastan. Yeah. And it's just like South Lebanon. The Israelis moved out and Hezbollah moved in. And I think the lesson for Israel is really on the Jordan and the Jordan Valley. If they ever abandon the Jordan River and Jordan Valley, um, you really have to worry about their security. And I think a lot of them believe that. What about the future? You know, it was proposed some time ago that really the, uh, the old days, those so-called Palestinians had Jordanian passports and that maybe uh, letting that part of territory, the so-called West Bank, come once again under the control of Jordan. I guess the Jordanians don't want it, but would that be a good solution? <laughs> You know, at the, at the, as you know, at the very end of the book, I say, I think we have to think about that solution. Because if you ever had an independent Palestinian state, it's natural that they would immediately turn to Jordan for politics, uh, commercially, for air travel. And the links we, between them and Jordan would grow and grow. The Palestinians would really need the Jordanian army for security. So I think uh, it's not popular to talk about that, but I'm glad you raised it because it is the natural evolution. As one Palestinian once said to me, we need to have an independent state for 15 minutes anyway. <laughs> well, there's so much corruption. Uh, how about the, the Brotherhood? Are they, uh, they set up Yasser Arafat uh, and the PLO. Uh, what about the Palestinian authorities? Desperately corrupt, isn't it? 
Yeah, you know, the, there was a decrease in corruption after Arafat died in 2004. It's climbed up again. And it's, a, it, it's a very big problem, including, frankly, um, Mahmoud Abbas, whose picture you showed on the cover of the book. Uh, he and, uh, candidly, his sons are involved in a lot of things that they uh, should not be involved in. That, that's a huge problem for looking ahead for the Palestinians. They've got to find a way to wring that out of the system. You, I think one of the things you're trying to show here is how involved uh, George Bush was in this process. Uh, is that true? I mean, he really was uh, doing everything he could to bring about a peaceful solution. You know, I'm glad you raised that because there's a myth that, oh, you know, President Bush wasn't involved, he wasn't interested, he turned to this in his last year. And I show in the book, story by story, meeting in the Oval Office, Air Force One, travel. He was involved just about every day. He didn't push Israel into a peace agreement that they did not want because he thought that was wrong. He thought the conditions didn't exist for it. And he told them, I will never try to cram this. That was his word. I will never try to cram this down on you. Uh, but he was involved in trying because he really cared. He really deep, deep in his heart, he cared about the future of Israel. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, the uh, Morsi is, has a revolt on his hands in Egypt. The uh, Iranians are almost at that red line that uh, Bibi Netanyahu talked about. Uh, do you see an explosion over there? I, I, I can't see a peaceful solution coming out of this troubled region, but maybe I'm wrong. No, it's very hard to be optimistic about Egypt, where I don't see the system holding. I, I'm not at all sure that that system won't collapse in, a, in another year. Um, and on Iran, you know, we're, are the Israelis really going to put their future, their lives, their children's lives in the hands of uh, Mr. Obama and Mr. Biden and risk everything on that? I don't think so. So I, I think sometime in the next year they're going to act against Iran. It's not a pleasant prospect, is it? It really isn't. And you know, it's wrong. It's wrong in the sense that we're the global power. We're the superpower. If Iran is a threat to the world, and it is, we're the ones who should act. And we, of course, are infinitely stronger than Israel. It's kind of disgraceful, really, to leave this global problem in the hands of that small country. But if we do, I think they'll take that responsibility, and I think they will act, and they'll save themselves and us. Lillian Abrams, thank you for the work you've done. We really appreciate you. The book's called Tested by Zion. It's a chronicle of some of the things that are happening. You'll find it very interesting, written by a man who was there in those negotiations. Fascinating. Thanks again. Lots to watch in the coming year. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Goodness. Terry, I said at the beginning, think what a nuke would do. And, and Ahmadinejad and those mullahs, they are fanatics, and they wouldn't mind incinerating Israel, nor would they mind taking five million casualties if the Israelis... And that's what I was going to say, yeah. is their, their own people are... They're prepared, because it'll bring in the Mahdi. The, uh, out of the desolation, the Mahdi will appear and bring peace to the world. That's what they believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we're not going to negotiate them out of that. But the, the people in Washington who seem to uh, have stars in their eyes don't understand fanaticism. And that's what we're dealing with. Let's hope they don't wait too long. Okay. Well, Elliot Abram, great book. Yes. Tested by Zion, a wonderful guy. Yeah.